Okay. So we got a 1.2 video transmitter right out there in the wing that no lights. And this is that really stiff, although it's only four conductor, this was much stiffer than the uh, six conductor cable I used. The wire gauge is bigger diameter. And remember I had this kind of a pushed pin in this red lead right here. So let me start looking to see what might be causing that. <laughs> well, there's the connector connected to the board. It's yellow, red, black, and white. The yellow is the video. The red is the supply voltage. The black is the ground and the white is the smart audio, which I don't use. So let's look at the uh, hardware guide. The fact sheet, the hardware guide, whatever you want to call it. And right here is what we're talking about at the bottom. This is the, oops, this is the H743 wing. <sighs> it's the same, <laughs> but I will go get the F765 wing for you. Discontinued due to a shortage. Yeah. Okay, now we're at the same thing. The only difference in the picture on this, besides the lettering, is this that I found so far is this little white mark right here in the silk screen. <laughs> anyway, so there's your video into your video transmitter, or actually the video out of the board in truth into the video transmitter the camera right here above these two cameras right here above bring the video into the board where the osd is applied and then that osd applied video comes out this bn goes to the video on the transmitter red which is what i said so that's the yellow red nine volts in i think I, and I'll have to verify this right down to taking that darn flight controller back out of that fuselage, opening it up, and looking at these pads. They're right here and right here. And I've, I think I've sorted three of these together since I started playing with them six months ago, a year ago, whenever it been, sometime between six months and a year ago. And I know I soldered every one of them up for nine volts on this pad with their choice for VSW right here is the nine volts. So that's this information out here. So that's there's five volts when it's you take a piece of solder and you bridge these two pads and it's nine volts when you take a piece of solder and bridge these two pads that's what they're talking about right here what you get out of it three amps max nine volts or five volts two amps constant now here's the bunch of asterisks and the 9 volt rise to 12 volt if 9 volt to 12 volt jumper is bridged and that's up here 9 volt rise to 12 put a little solder across these I know I did it on at least two of those that I soldered up I think I might have left one of them at nine volts here I didn't want to measure across this 
and I'm not sure if okay because this is down here with this it supposes me to say that this will rise to 12 volts but is it just the VSW uh, jumper this makes me think that no the VSW voltage I don't know what the SW stands on for on that, but I know it's the voltage that goes into the second camera you can plug in. This seems to be a fixed 9 volts. Do these two never rise to 12 volts? That's been a question of mine. Now, I didn't want to measure this voltage across the board with nothing on it, no load on it. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to see a little puff of blue smoke. Uh, I'm not saying that will happen, but that's the cases where we, we, the, the magic happens. <laughs> it's better to go ahead and get a video transmitter on there, even if it's one that's shorting, whatever. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. Uh, but it's better to get a load on something and then measure the voltage across it than it is frequently to measure the voltage straight. You, you can get in trouble that way. Uh, and you can get in trouble by what scale you use on your meter. Uh, so I'm not teaching anybody how to use a meter. No, I'm just telling you, even I am. And we had to build our own meter in the Navy in electronic school from scratch. Know which every part and what every part of it did meticulously down to the last color-coded stripe on the last friggin' resistor. I'm never going back there. Maybe I forget some of this stuff because I didn't like it. Uh, so right there across was my yellow, red, black, and then the white i not using is just the transmit out of UR8 so that the smart audio can be transmitted from this board into a smart audio enabled. Uh, video transmitter, any smart audio enabled device. So that's the way it's fired. Uh, let's go look at the next connector. And that next connector is right here. Uh, that funky four conductor locking together and see then I, I used the locking together on here and then used just the plug-in ones on the aileron and the elevator i did go in here which i didn't put in any of my videos put in a y connector on channel one put in a little lead extra lead on channel two uh just because i didn't want to plug directly to the board in the field because my poor eyesight and broad daylight sun uh, and doing it time and time and time and time and time again. I'm going to get those pins off sometime. I don't want to drive 45 minutes to a field I fly in with stuff like this and uh, see the magic smoke and have to drive home again. Just not going to be a fun drive, especially the one home. Uh, I also did put a little, oops, we can't see it in here. I did put a little pigtail on the two pan and tilt servos that I plugged into channels 9 and 10 and I did put a pigtail on the camera I put a uh, connector on the end of that wire for the camera this wire here and that's basically the whole connection so we're back down to talking about this uh, connector so after putting in all these just normal rc plug-in connectors and like i say there's three more for the pan tilt and the camera itself up there it seemed like wherever i saw using these things was maybe not so bright <laughs> so uh, the best way for me to troubleshoot this connector is to unplug it from this flight controller. Now that I've verified the yellow, red, black, white configuration of this connector, 
and ring it from here. These four little uh, uh, connector pads, whatever they you call them. It's really easy to touch a meter to these four little places. And we'll touch the other end out on the connector out there on the wing and see if we have continuity between that connector and this one that's plugged into the flight controller. So I have to get into that connector. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to cut a little relief on the foam and go in there with a pair of tweezers, hemostats, something. Oh no. Don't want to really pull on the insulator on this side of the connector and try to get into the metal pins that way because that'll just pull the insulator back. No problem in the fuselage, so we'll just push that aside and get serious here because no, don't want to pull on them with a pair of tweezers or anything anyway. So I'm going to have to cut me a little relief there. Well, I did get the connector off rather easily, and I had put hot glue on top of it here, and the hot glue came up real easy. Uh, and I just smoothed it over while it was hot with a popsicle stick so it was flat. Uh, also looks like I nicked the red wire while doing this because right down there's the piece of insulation so that's why I have the deep suspicion that it happened just now <laughs> hmm. have to get that out of there uh, hope there's not a little piece of wire I think this is stranded wire whoa it's deeper than I thought no there's a little piece of wire in it that I'd nick some wire. So I think I just nicked it. But but the, hey, this connector's so small to get into with a meter. I'll have to use a push pin and my meter to touch those points. But <clears throat> right now I can just use, test the white one. I mean, white one. The uh, red one, real easy <laughs> from this end to that end with a meter. Well. After I asked the wife to help, I guess. <laughs> well, my wife came down and helped me ring out the cable. R-I-N-G. It's what electronics people say when they're checking the continuity between two ends of the cable. They're ringing it out as if in the old days when a telephone rang. I guess the telephone still rang, but not like they did when you had a party line with 12 other families around the neighborhood on the same line. Anyway, uh... And like I say, I had to use a push pin. This is a just a push pin like you'd push into a bulletin board or something, but it gives me a sharp enough tip to hold like that against the meter lead and put in the, this connector. All of these wires were 100% fine. <laughs> I really didn't have to disconnect it or uh, anything. I guess my problem up there with the one pin in that four position connector up there isn't such a problem that I was worried it was. So I think it's now down to board voltage perhaps. Or this transmitter could be completely blown all to pieces right there. Uh, oh man. I hate to say I'm next thing. Well, let's dig the flight controller out of the fuselage, open it up, and check the sorter pads. Uh, let me just stop. It's kind of late tonight. <laughs> uh, and if it's something like that, I, uh, I will attack that again tomorrow. I have another ready made RC video transmitter like that one with exactly the same uh, 
connector on it. I've had this one for eight years or more. Uh, it's just, I think it's exactly the same thing. It's in there. I don't think there's any change in them in years. So I'm going to hook this into that cable and hook it back to the flight controller and see if this one comes on as a last desperate attempt <laughs> to keep from digging that flight controller back out of that fuselage. Luckily, with that sliding equipment tray, it's not really all that big of a deal at all. And while it's out, I'll be able to show you more of how I did the connectors on it. Not that it's something you might want to follow. <laughs> uh it's just an example maybe if not what to do who knows no it's not that bad and these are just old you can see this is back when these were called eight channel uh don't know if these are still eight channel or not uh this may be in the days before they locked out the other six channels and uh, so they had your european channels which are actually in the 1.3 uh band and that's why this is referred to as 1.3 frequently, and the same receiver is also referred to as 1.2s because in the United States, we use like 1258 and 1280 megahertz for frequency. So in the United States, we call these 1.2 radios. But I, I've got two of these from years and years ago. This might tell you why I have a love for 1.2. <laughs> maybe not so much because it's great it was back in the day uh but i've got so much money invested in it. <laughs> i've got a 1.2 pepper box <laughs> that sucker was like 125 bucks just the antenna <laughs> these things were expensive back in the day now, I, no telling what these cost back in the day like i said i've got another one over there it's still in the can like this I was looking at a video today on the Bixler where this in a can was mounted to the outside top of the wing. Boy, and this is, this is heavy. There was also all of this. This is the rest of the stuff that's in one of these. These are uh, cooling plates that are, whoops, these are the end plates. These brass colored things are the end plates for this enclosure box. And these are the cooling plates and you can see some of them have the uh, edge turned up on them. That's so you can get them in there kind of spring-loaded and really get them pushing hard against the uh, video transmitter for heat dissipation. <laughs> Let's see what this weighs, just for kicks and grins. Just the enclosure. Yeah. I got the ends. I thought I'd left the ends off. Just the enclosure is 51 grams. <laughs> That's half of a GoPro. And this is the rest with... This was... I guess I'd been using these kind of connectors. These don't lock like the other ones. Oh, they do. This was a three-prong locking that I did use in the past. This was just supply voltage for it. And then this went over to uh, the camera. So, what is that? 81 grams. See why the, uh, if we take this away, 32, and there's 52. See why a 70 gram pan servo isn't such a big thing to me? That's where I kind of want to put my excess weight. And this was crazy what we dealt with. So, I guess I will verify my color coding again and we'll plug this transmitter into that cable and turn on the battery and see what this video transmitter does you always put a cable on a transmitter you'll blow them up if you don't without th this is part of the electronic uh, what would you call it? It's, it's like a component. The way that this antenna is tuned, its impedance, its resistance, its capacitance to the final output amplifier in a transmitter is part of the circuitry as if it was a resistor or capacitor. It's needed. It really is. 
without this portion that appears to be some resistor, some capacitor, some inductor to the, or a combination of any of those, to the transmitter, if it's not out there, the circuitry, the final output amplifier in here will start reflecting power and it produces heat, it produces all sorts of other electrical problems. Most people think it's just the heat. No, the heat's enough to do it. But no, there's a whole lot more electrically going on where transistors aren't only not biased correctly for correct operation, they start getting some reverse flow. And you can have all sorts of crazy things happen. I kind of try to put a transmitter on everything these days because you know the crossfire receivers aren't receivers, they're transceivers. The telemetry radios that we've used for years and most of the telemetry radios, they're transceivers. They both transmit and receive. So because there is a transmitter, you know, you can turn on a receiver all day long without an antenna on it. It's not going to hurt it. It's just not going to receive on the frequency that it's supposed to very well without a tuned antenna on the input. But there's not a pseudo electrical component to it that's part of the first input on a receiver that input's just sitting there looking for a little voltage on what it's expecting to receive and if it finds it it starts amplifying it and off you go to the races <laughs> if it doesn't get anything in it thinks okay i just don't have a signal <laughs> but on the transmitter it's totally different totally different so because things can be transceivers that you don't really suspect to be just put an antenna on everything and you'll save yourself a lot of grief with that let's see if this damn thing will power up <laughs> okay we're powered back up i thought i had figured it out for a second i was using a 3s just to power it and that was 11.2 volts when we saw it on the mission planner in the first video tonight i guess it was so I switched over to a 4S where I had more than 12 volts. Not that I don't know that the voltage regulator inside this flight controller could develop 12 volts from an 11 volt supply. I have no idea if it can or not. Uh, asking it to is probably not great. And the polarity of the connector was fine on this, but it looking like it's on right there <laughs> it's just an illusion if you put it in the shade it's just the nixie tube in there shining it's a new it must be in the flight controller i have to go in now and look at those jumpers that i talked about solder pads actually they are on the uh, got me a little switch in here for ease Click that off. Uh, the solder pads, which are bridged with solder for different voltages. So I ended up sucking it up and reading the voltage with the meter across the red and black, and it's 8.93 volts. So I honestly think on this flight controller, I did not solder that. Uh, 9 volt rise to 12. Let me show you that on the screen. I just took this little connector, put it up there on the camera 1 position, 8.93 volts. Put it up on the camera 2 position, 8.93 volts. That could be why I'm not getting enough voltage. I'll have to look and see what the, what the voltage is on these. I think it was 12 volts. I'm not sure. Uh, like I've said, these are old. No, the one that's in there was... Okay, I got two from ready-made RC like 10 years ago. <laughs> I got one from ready-made RC in the last year, and I got one from Maytech in the last year. The Maytech has uh, smart audio in it. I got that confused. That's why. And the one I got from ready-made RC recently does not have smart audio in it just regular analog audio and 
That's why I was wanting to use one of these. I've got four of the darn things and the ground station to boot on it. Just <laughs> lots of money. Uh, and the Sky Hunter is the best platform to try it on because you're going to see in the future there's problems with 1.2 with interference on uh, stuff. I even talked to Crossfire recently. I got an email to show you that I got from them what they're blaming some problems on. So I'll have to dig out the flight controller. This is the uh, video transmitter we're talking about. Uh, this product requires an amateur license to operate legally in the United States. I have my ham license. Uh, right here looks to be the problem to me. Mm. All these 9 volts and 12 volts and such, you got to take them with a grain of salt. Those are very... And sometimes it doesn't you know I can't tell you 100% that I'm going to get out of this with this but I am going to look at the solder pads tomorrow I can't tell you for sure what I'm going to find with those solder pads because they're so strange to me I don't know if the 9 volt ones always stay five vol uh, 9 volts but the VSW by the way I think the SW on that is because it can also be a relay switch between that pole and ground is where you do your relays or you put in a switch like you want to have a bomb drop mechanism or something like that so that VSW I think that's also the SW is the switch part of that but that's so 21 grams anyway so we'll have to find out what happens yep here's your 1280 megahertz and 1258 megahertz. Move the decimal point three places to the left and convert megahertz to gigahertz. One, two, three. 1.258 gigahertz. 1.280 gigahertz. That's why we call them 1.2. Uh, that's how you convert them. But. I still call them 1.3s up here. If you look at the international version, there's a nice one. 2.5 watts. Ooh. Oh, I'd like to have that. I'd also like to have it not interfere with my crossfire. <laughs> and you see they're not going to let you get a hold of this one in the United States. And even if you could, it would require a, a, a ham license. Uh, and you see here. Oh, look, this one doesn't go up into the 1.3. This one actually drops down. Oh, there's your 1360. So there's your 1.36 gigahertz and your 1.32 gigahertz. Wow. Wow, there's, there's the channels. There's... They're lower than the 1280 right here and the 1258 we use. These are five lower. Wow, seems like those would be usable in the United States. And again, I'm interested to see if that uh, transmitter, if I can get it powered up, I'm gonna interested to see if it's uh, locked out. So that's what we're gonna do. Thanks a lot, everybody.